Along with individual experts, Surgeon Masters brings you life improvement strategies in 10 minutes. These proven principles and strategies are easy to learn and can be applied immediately, allowing you to practice your best. Here's your host, Jeff Smith. Welcome everybody to the Surgeon Masters Mini Podcast. On this episode, I have with me a clinical and sports psychologist, Jim Dorley. Jim is a psychological services provider for the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee and a research fellow in integrative medicine at Harvard Medical School. Welcome, Jim. Thanks a lot for having me. So, Jim, it's great to have a sports psychologist on to tell us what we can do to be better surgeons and integrate sort of psychology concepts to that. So tell us a little bit more of your how you got interested in this topic. Sure. Yeah. So I started off in, really as a clinical psychologist, not even in the performance or sport world, got interested in sport kind of through a research angle. Actually, one of my advisors was doing mindfulness studies in sport. And I got into the applied side from there, actually working with athletes. I myself, though, I'm not an elite athlete by any stretch. I have a background in kind of performing music as a percussionist and a drummer. So I was immediately interested in performance in various domains. And I think it may have been five years ago, I stumbled upon a couple studies of sports psychologists who were applying what they do to surgeons, right? Thinking about surgeons as elite performers, which they are, and thinking about the high stress and the high stakes. So I got really, I got interested in that, I guess, briefly. And then, you know, I didn't see a lot more literature coming out on this and then eventually got connected to my now colleague, Dr. Jim Naples, who is a surgeon and has been thinking deeply about this stuff. So we've kind of put our heads together to see how we can help surgeons. So in that, uh, particularly in that more recent, that collaborative effort, tell us uh, some of the stuff that you've been doing and learning. Sure. Well, we've been thinking a lot about how can we improve surgical training, which is already great in many ways. You know, surgeons are coming out of training programs as competent, and for sure it takes a lot of experience to reach that high level of competence. But we just noted that the mental sides of surgery are not explicit in most training programs. A lot of the best surgeons out there are maybe doing this tacitly without understanding it, like kind of thinking about the mental performance side, but it's not inherent, right? So we're trying to help people at the training level to give them a language and to help them understand there's this thing called performance psychology. You might not have been aware of it. We're trying to help people with the cognitive, emotional, interpersonal aspects of performance. And you can actually use this. You can integrate this into your training, right? And it's not the same as seeing a therapist. It's not the same as seeing a psychologist. It's built out of those areas, but it's something different. Yeah, it sounds like, and maybe I'm using the wrong terminology, but it's skill building within those domains. That's right. Yeah. The work that I do with individuals and teams, whether it's athletes or otherwise, it's about teaching skills. A lot of psychologists and sports psychologists, that's what the work actually looks like. It's not necessarily talking about feelings or talking about the past it's learning the whole host of different skills. And just to rattle off some examples that are pretty common in the sport world, you're talking about optimizing goal setting, the science of how to set the best goals, building pre-performance routines that you can apply every single time for a sense of familiarity, taking a critical look at our thinking. Are our thoughts accurate? Are they helpful? Because our thoughts our thoughts become things, right? Our thoughts influence our performance. Training to optimize our attention, oftentimes through mindfulness. Is our attention flexible? Can we pay attention to the right things at the right times? How are we coaching ourselves? How are we bouncing back from mistakes and adversity? And how are we visualizing and kind of simulating a performance scenario before it happens? So these are all, I mean, you did a great job of listing things that seem completely relevant to surgeons and surgery Tell us a little bit more about some of the early work that you're doing at looking at this stuff or stuff that you're aware of. Sure. Yeah. It's interesting to talk about work that is out there that I'm aware of. You know, I'm certainly not aware of everything, but like I said, there is a small kind of scientific literature of some folks who are applying this performance psychology work and skills to surgeons. There's people like Nicholas Anton at University of Indiana, uh, Michael Askin at UPMC, Eric Bean, others who I, I'm not naming, but it's out there. People have worked specifically on mental rehearsal, on 
trying to visually and psychologically simulate a performance scenario and how how applicable it is to surgery, right? There's actual surgical simulations, right? Trying to simulate the procedural technical skills of a surgery. But then there's the whole other side of that, which is performing, including performing a surgery. There's a whole psychological state that you're in when you're doing that. It's then that's hard to simulate, right? You can go through the motions, so to speak, but it's really hard to feel the way that you're going to feel when you're performing and certain coaches who are very skilled and certain sports psychologists who are skilled can help their athletes or performers do this to me motor imagery or mental rehearsal is one of the best ways that we can do it so it's interesting because surgeons historically were almost trained to be solo you could do things on your own you didn't need a team but it This also does relate to the concept of you might be employed by a hospital system, you might be employed as an academician, or you may even be an independent contractor. But what is the role of, say, the organization in helping surgeons implement some of the concepts that you teach and train on? That's a great question. I think that's where I and and Dr. Naples, my colleagues, see a big gap here. I don't think we have nearly the level of institutional buy-in that we need. There's some work being done out there, some good work being done, but I don't think it's being recognized or fully appreciated at the systemic level, medical school, faculty, other stakeholders. I think there needs to first be an understanding of what performance psychology even is, which probably is not widely understood or accepted. People need to understand that it's not like seeing a psychologist or therapist. Of course, not everyone is open to that. We're still fighting stigma, but this is different. There needs to be, I think, a simple introduction. There needs to be some space in the curriculum, right? Med students, residents, fellows, everyone is incredibly busy. The idea of adding something else into the schedule, into the mix can sound horrifying, but it really works quite seamlessly. I think that's what I found in the work I've started doing, working with surgery residents and fellows, that it's highly complementary to the tactical and technical skills they're already learning. It's really a way you could think about it like bolstering motor skill acquisition, right? There's a whole kind of psychology behind that alone, right? And who would argue that that doesn't sound relevant and useful to surgeons? And it sounds like there's some demonstration that early return on investment that the added value of the, I don't know if it's speed or integration of these things into the training creates better learners. Yeah, you know, there are some studies that have been done on trainees specifically, as well as, you know, attending practicing surgeons. I think we need to see larger studies, better controlled studies. But Another thing that my colleague and I talk about a lot, Dr. Naples, is that we have a lot of data. There is a lot of data in other performance domains, of course, primarily sports, to show that this stuff works. There was uh, last year, perhaps this year, I can't remember, a massive meta-analysis of meta-analyses published in sport showing that performance psychology skills work. So how much more do we need, right? Or if we kind of transpose that to other performance environments, we're probably going to find something similar. When it comes to mental rehearsal, for example, one of my favorite skills, there's good evidence in multiple domains showing that when you combine physical practice and mental practice, that combination is better than either one alone. So this is great. We could go on for probably hours talking about this subject, particularly with your experience and expertise. What do you think is a good take-home message for next steps? Obviously, I heard one, which is just raise awareness of what this is, but what would your summary be? Sure. And I think that is the first takeaway is that there is this thing called performance psychology out there. I would encourage people to see what this is all about. The best sports teams in the U.S. and the most popular leagues are now employing sports psychologists routinely. And there's a whole repertoire of mental skills that are bolstered by decades of psychological science that can help people perform. And I think if we can help people perform better, it sounds very specific, but we're actually helping their well-being and their career longevity. I think for surgeons, that's incredibly important in such a stressful career. Well, thanks, Jim, for sharing that with our audience. And thanks for being our guest. Thanks so much. There you have it. In less than 10 minutes, this is Jeff Smith, along with Jim Dorley. Until the next episode of Life Improvement Strategies for the Surgeon Who Wants More. Ciao. Now, take 10 minutes and put your plan into action to practice your best.